Hugh Hefner, a true American icon, created an empire that was unrivaled. Although some of his bunnies may have gone rogue, it's because of the love and respect that we received from the man behind it all. The Rogue Bunny's mission is simple. 100 playmates taking control of their valuable IP while honoring Hef's iconic Playboy style and bringing that experience to our collectors. Like only we know how. Because after all, we did learn from the best. Relive the stories from the most prominent celebrity home in history. From those of us that lived it. The employees that worked it. And the guests who loved it. And the, the mayhem continues. And we're back. That's right. We are doing part two of the Girls Next Door episode, I guess you call it. I don't know what we're going to call this show. But we are just having fun in studio. I am Brian Olea. And this is Jennifer Pershing. I'm Victoria Fuller. I'm Scott Ramsey. And we are still here with Lauren Weinstein and Titus Hurd. Guys, I'm telling you, this is so much fun. Just, I'm just reliving it. It's like no time passed. It's 2023 when the show, when, when, when did we wrap? 2009. That's crazy to me. Yeah, we went on to do like Kendra and to do a lot of yeah, other shows yeah. too, but Girls Next Door was two thousand. But we also did the the original Girls, you know, Kendra, Bridget, Holly, and then we went on to do another two or three seasons. Just with one like, one season of, of one. Yeah, with the with, with Crystal the and twins, the twins. Yeah. Was it just one? It was just one. Yeah. Oh, it feels like a lot longer. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was one season. <laughs> yeah, it was so just one season. Oh my goodness. Okay. You know, but nothing felt more like natural to me uh-huh. I, I remember yeah, it okay. wasn't the same it wasn't i was worried about that at first because you know we have such a relationship with yeah. the girls yeah. yeah we were all and so it was like how is this gonna be and so i was a little like you know reserved in the beginning and then thinking like how is this how am i gonna feel about these girls because i really love the girls and yeah so, right, and it's right. important too when you you know are working so closely with them but as soon as i met the girls like the new girls it was like oh I really like them too. It was different, of course, but I think it's always difficult like when you have core characters and then you completely replace them yeah. or, or change it out. Yeah, I just think it wouldn't have mattered who they were. I just think people were so connected with the the three Holly, yeah. Bridget, and Kendra. So exactly, would, there wouldn't have been probably anybody that could have replaced them. Yeah, they're not replaceable. It was yeah, just a, it was a it was what Kevin saw, you know, and Hef obviously knowing that there was a magic between those three yeah. girls. It's you know, like you any show that's a spinoff yeah. is not going to be like not going to be like the friends. same. It's not, not the that same. It's Joey, but yeah. then you, know you recognize mean? that we want it's friends. Different. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for for those that are are tuning in and going, oh, Girls Next Door, I remember. I grew up with that, right? Uh-huh. I mean, think of a lot of the listeners now. They're like, oh, man, yeah. I remember. I was a little kid watching yeah. that, or I wasn't That's allowed to. half the reason I wanted to be a playmate was watching or, Girls Next yeah. Door. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. How old were you when you first started watching Girls Next Door? Well, I, I was a playmate in 2009, and I watched all of the seasons. So I was 28 when I shot, so I was older. Mm-hmm. But they, they were sort of the same age as me. Holly was the same age as me, yeah. so it was sort of... From the outside looking in, the Playboy Mansion looked like so much fun. Oh, yeah. You know, so if you were even like kind of reserved about trying out for the magazine, you just knew that there was this world up there that mm-hmm. that would be fun to be a it part of. It was fun. You know. I don't care what anybody says. It, There's was no so way fun. to slice it. It was no. a lot of fun. Was it surreal since you were watching the show prior to being <laughs> yeah. part of the family? And then I was that on you're one. you're like in that room going, yeah. wait a minute, this is where they film this or no, they film well, that. like. Uh, during the shooting, I got a text from Holly, and she's like, come with us. We're going on a boat. Just wear something cute. I didn't even know I was going to be on the show. <laughs> so I just show up at the mansion. I'm in a bathing suit, you know, ready to go. And then the limo, and then they drive us. And it was the scuba diving episode. Oh, yeah. So we're all on this, like, yacht uh-huh. with the girls, and they're getting their scuba cer- certifications yep. or something. And you see me walking down the dock, and there's me on Girls Next Door. So it was such a... <laughs> wow, that's like really cool. Alice in Wonderland, like, flip mm-hmm. the mirror moment for me, because then I still, like... We'll send the video to my friends. Like, look, it was me. (laughs) That's so so awesome. (laughs) You know, I was talking about Kevin Burns, and I was blessed to actually befriend the man, you know, because at first he came up, he used to come up to Manly Night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if maybe we we should reveal how this even show came about. It was really Kevin coming up to Manly Night, right, Titus? Yeah, he was going to be doing, well, the original concept was about life behind the gates of the Playboy Mansion, and but through the eyes of the staff. So it was upstairs, downstairs type 
idea. It was like Hef's world, right? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Because Hef was didn't want to be front and center and put all the time into be like mic'd and all that stuff. He he wanted to be kind of like about him, but in the background more, right? Like, yeah, yeah. He didn't want to yeah. be. Yeah, so he did. So Kevin Burns did a, did personality tests with all the staff, and he was just trying to find the heart of what the show was supposed to be. And then he saw the girls, and he thought, well, maybe this is this is interesting. Each one had their own unique personality, but all together, it was yeah. kind of magic. You yeah. Know? So he said, that's the show. Yeah. I remember when Kevin came to the mansion, he had all of his staff, because I, I was one of those that got, we had to do, what is it, what is it called, personality test or mm-hmm. whatever the hell yeah, it was. Yeah. I was supposed to be the Elvis guy, because back then I had my hair cut <laughs> with the Elvis pompadour and all that <laughs> stuff. Wore a lot of Elvis t-shirts or whatever. And so he goes, you're going to be the Elvis guy. I'm like, okay. Huh? <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, Wait, but we were all nervous. I remember talking to a lot of my butler staff. They're like, I don't want to do this. I go, what, what does this mean? We're going to have cameras on us all the time. we got to watch what we say. Is it going to be running 24-7? These were the concerns of the entire staff. And I'll never forget when Kevin came in that, you know, people that, you know, so we raise our hands. We're like, how's this going to work? We've seen, like, real world. And where they're trying to, like, you know, they're filming everything and even, like, you know, people hooking up and stuff like this. So if we get mad at someone and we're talking shit, next thing you know, that's going to be, are that's oh going to be put out there? Yeah. Right. We're, like, going, what the hell? Or sometimes things just don't go the way you expect. Yeah them and we're rushing and we're getting frustrated and, and then a month to get later it's on tv and, you're like, and causing Damn. a rift in your working environment right yeah. exactly and this is where i had the hugest first respect for kevin and then getting to know him he says look i'm gonna put everyone at ease right now i'm gonna tell you right now half and i have had a long talk about this and he goes one you're all doing it <laughs> 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 like oh shit okay <laughs> but two don't worry it's all gonna be fun mm-hmm. he goes we're not here to make anyone look bad because we don't want that we, yeah. why would we want to put yeah, that why out there why would that? we're trying yeah. to write it, it to look like his and that was half's like, rule yeah. half's rule yeah. was like okay i'm gonna let you do this reality show here but understand this is my staff these are the ones that take care of me yeah. they're don't representation create so don't drama. start drama don't yeah. don't get everybody and, fighting and and yeah. that's what was so cool and it said and by the way the show premise has changed We've realized that there's something here with the three girls. It does fit the motto of what Playboy is supposed to be. You know, the yeah, sure. supposed to be the girl next door. The pretty girls. So here are the girls next door. He's dating these three girls. We're going to go through their eyes, but you're the support cast. You're the ones that they're going to be interacting with. Yeah. And once they said that, everyone went, ah. <sighs> Yeah, Ooh, so you know you're what I mean? doing what you do, yeah, and yeah, you're like, just okay, yeah, and you know, acting in the back, you know. And it was really nice, Lauren. Lauren and I adore you. I really do. I, I've talked Same. so highly when I talk <laughs> Titus. I go, I miss her because we really developed a friendship. Mm-hmm. You would come into the into my office. Hey, Brian, can we talk? Yeah. And it was nice to know the cameras weren't on us twenty four seven. It was only when that scene happened. But of course, if Lauren goes, Hey, Brian, can we talk? <laughs> There's two or three cameras following right behind her. So you're like, <laughs> yeah, just come on in. And you, eventually you just forget the cameras. Yeah. yeah. You do. You do. Because I think what happened, and Lauren, I give you credit on this. You were so personable with each of us mm-hmm. and made us so comfortable, we didn't see the cameras anymore. Oh. You made us com- it was like, hey, we're going to do this. What do you do? And I go, okay, well, what are we doing? Like the dog party, right? The most yeah. embarrassing <laughs> thing aside from wearing a freaking cheerleading skirt, right? I'm like, well, here's a, a function sheet. Yeah. This is it. It's got a timeline. <laughs> this is how it works. And so whether we're doing, you, you rocked know. rocked that dog party, Yeah, yeah right? right? <laughs> well, the funny part about that is we had a luncheon going on, right? And it was a last minute. No one told us. You come in and it's like, hey, you know, Bridget's going to be doing this birthday party. Was it for Winnie? Wednesday. Oh, was it yeah. Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Winnie. Winnie, yeah. right. Okay, Winnie. And they're going to do it behind. I'm like, and I literally freak. I'm like, I don't have any butlers to do this. <laughs> I go, they're all doing, we had literally this huge Chinese consulate meeting luncheon going oh, on. Wow. I, no it was pressure. like really important <laughs> that we had to do it. So I couldn't let it. I'm like, I'm going to have to suit up. I'm like, I still have my butler outfit. I'm like, I guess I'm doing this. What the <laughs> hell are we doing? And that's where that came about. And of course, I had to put the stupid thing on and go out there and serve dogs. You know what I mean? I know I sound, you know, a little haphazard. Shut I mean... up, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> My nephew in the background taking photos going, yeah, I remember that. Because they all knew. They like, yeah, yeah. We'd laugh at At me. least you didn't have to wear like a dog costume. Yeah. <sighs> right? Yeah, good there's, point. There's yeah. always the tube top. <laughs> <laughs> but again... Getting back to being comfortable and when people say, well, what was it like to be on a reality show? Look, mm-hmm. it was all real for us. Yeah. We didn't fake any of it. 
Yeah, we during just, that we time. We just did, did what we did. Yeah, you just did your day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, now things are different in reality world. So anyone Scripted who's listening reality. who's just like, yeah, right. It really was back then. Our jobs, like we would show up at the mansion and we'd knock on the girls' doors like, hey, are you guys, what are you guys doing today? And, you know, oh, I'm getting my nails done. Can we follow you? And then we'd call like the, you know, the salon and like, hey, can we come and film it? Like it really was very, very free. I mean, we sometimes had ideas. Yeah, if it was going to be, if the episode was about Winnie's birthday, you know, the prep and leading up to it and all that stuff. But for the most part, it was pretty, pretty loose and it was like just fun and back to what you're saying about me making you guys feel comfortable like that's how I felt with you guys because I'm going to this house which of course at the time you know in the beginning was like was a little intimidating you know it's the playboy mansion and there's so many rules and there's all the staff and whatever but it really was a family and when you go in there like you felt so welcome like I would walk in and out that door like I lived there I knew nooks nooks and crannies of that place that people who've been going there for 30 years didn't know and I was so comfortable, you know, to go talk to Norma and um, Joe and Mary and everybody, you know, it just was so amazing. Like even like, you know, Cooper walking in the hallways or Marston coming by or whatever it might be. Everybody was so lovely. And just, you know, when you were in the family, you were in it like Friday nights, even if we filmed like movie night, Friday nights, it's like I'm seeing everyone like the Michael and Melissa Turkillis. It's like they became mm-hmm. like friends to me. Yes. You know, seeing them, yep. it was like. It was just, I loved it. Or seeing Therese, you know, when she's little, like all the little kids, you know, everyone had these like ideas of what what the mansion was, you know, that it was like this um, just crazy party place or whatever. And really to all of us, it really was like a Mr. Rogers neighborhood, you know, and it was a family and people and kids grew up there and it was lovely. And parties happened a few times a year, but that was it. Other than that, it wasn't that at all yeah. it was like it was really actually quite common all mainly who you saw it you was. weren't seeing naked girls you were seeing like the gardeners and the butlers yeah. and like <laughs> well Hef was older and his friends were older yeah. so it was like yeah. there was a smattering of girls that yeah. were tr- testing her and the girlfriends, girlfriends but who he had been friends with like for 50 years or yep. whatever were yeah. coming t- yeah. coming because they were all still friends it was lovely I yeah. loved being there I just thought I felt so lucky and it was such a beautiful environment to arrive at this like Tudor house and all these flowers and, and how generous like, was he to just feed us all all the time yeah, yeah. like the food and the everything well, our stuff i always joke that we had the trailer and you guys had the mansion no oh. <laughs> we <had> the <laughs> that was our office like on the uh, the you got know, it in the property but we were still treated really well but yeah. i just we joked because that was our real estate it was like a little trailer <laughs> a trailer that's yeah, i love that you That's bring up about from. being a family because we talk about it all the time yeah I, I was getting a little emotional there because you know i start flashbacking i still do this to this day mm-hmm. i do, do, do any of you have dreams like in oh, the middle yeah. of the night you oh, wake yeah. up and you still think you're at the mansion oh yeah <laughs> i still hear the buzzer <laughs> oh, oh my shit. god <laughs> what, do you, what do i do i wake up yeah soup time. <laughs> you wake up huh what, what what's going on it's weird it's, it's just so embedded in us but we talk about family and titus and i we we, we talk about kevin and what an amazing man he was. I mean, he really gave me huge opportunity. I am so thankful to him. And I was glad that that Titus would let me come up to the office. And he'd go, Brian, come up. Kevin would love to see you. Yeah. And so he'd surprise Kevin. Like, remember so, when I made the chocolate cake? Yeah. Remember Hef had his chocolate cake? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. It was his, yes, the h Oh, cake. man. We would steal it all the time. <laughs> we knew where it was, and we weren't supposed to eat it all the time. And we would just... I knew the recipe, right? So yeah. we got the recipe Aww. from it. And I said, look, tell me when. I'll make it. I need that recipe. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you the secret. I'm not saying it on air. And so <laughs> it's really kind of easy, but it's cool. So I got to walk in and he goes, hey, Kevin, got a surprise for you. And I walked in on his birthday and I had the, and he goes, and right, remember, Titus he goes, is that the HMH chocolate cake? Yeah. He, you know, excited. And he sat around and talking or like he would continue manly night. Oh, we yeah. had the time we brought a couple I was invited up. to Manly Night one time. I thought that was the biggest honor. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, yes. Well, we Mary had, what, what did Victoria, what did Mary do? Mary Mary had her, because the Manly Night would happen, and then Mary O'Connor would get together with all the ladies, right? Yeah, Monday nights, right? Monday nights. Yeah, yeah. so Mary, for 20 years, we played cards yeah. at Mary's house. 
and we were called the Crows, the old Crows. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked that name, but um, I, yeah, I was the youngest. I mean, they're all you know Who seventy. Who picked that name? Well, Barry did, <laughs> and uh, and so wow. yeah, so we would play on Monday nights forever. And then even after she passed, we continued to play at her house for like another six years. Are you at playing Canasta? Uh, we played <laughs> euchre. We played all. We played all kinds of all kinds uh, of card games. Yeah, right. odd card yeah. games. Not no, and not from people like oh, it was Betty? No, there was no money involved we'd have dinner we'd do our chit chat we'd play our games we we're very serious about there getting was, into the card game there was and money then, involved when we played with half on Tuesday nights so though yeah but he's different <laughs> yeah. sometimes I'd be scrambling like oh no I've got to go get five dollars and sometimes yeah. I'd have to borrow he would go upstairs and come oh, back no, down and everyone would, better pay their debt yeah, yeah. yeah. he, he would like, I'll let you borrow this and if you and if I win that you owe me five dollars it's, like, I got it's so hard still though to like comprehend that we're talking about all these people in the past tense. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Hef, Keith, Mary, oh, yeah. Kevin, yeah. Joe yeah. Piastro. Like yeah. honestly, oh, like I'll I'll find myself like just crying just randomly, just thinking about it. Yeah, every so often I'll get a a, a craving for, for Spumoni. And we used to go yeah. to Baroni's in the valley. And that was where me and Go would hang out with Joe and we'd get our Spumoni and he'd have his old duels and we'd yeah. sit there and shoot the shit and these huge I'm personalities. Not getting okay, like, we're getting right. <laughs> I have these I have huge a question like, for you. lights yeah, in the yeah. world that like that they went out is still yeah. hard for me to comprehend. Yeah. I used to work at Prometheus. Like I don't think I could be at that office without Kevin. It would yeah. it's it hurts my heart to we think miss about him. that. Yeah, be, and his voice is so prominent. Like I I still hear his laugh. I hear his voice. He's still to this day is like, you know, my biggest mentor and yeah. I I can thank him for so many things in my life including like these amazing life experiences that I had at work. You know, it wasn't just a job for me. It was like crazy life experiences. I got to travel the world with Hugh Hefner and on private planes and like all sorts of crazy stuff. It was what, like traveling What was with your the first king. meeting with Hef like? The first time you got to meet him in person? Like, what do you remember about him? Well, we I always ask was, the girls, so. Yeah, it was my first, I don't think I was shooting yet that, um, it was, I just came over just to meet Mary, I think, because I was going to be going on that bus for the Christmas tour yes. lights. And I remember being like, well, I'm going to the mansion for my first time, but I don't think I'm going to see Hef, you know, like that's going to be, it's like a, that would not happen you know i don't know when i'm ever i'm ever gonna see him <laughs> and then sure enough you know there he like cruises by in his pjs and i just remember you know meeting him very briefly that first time and then after that you know people would make, make comments because i was younger too and it was like oh would you know he's gonna hit on you or something like that and i literally never felt anything like that because i worked for him and it was very clear you know like if anything like mm -hmm. The eye contact, you know, it was like even just to get eye contact, he was just like very business. I wasn't yeah. like a pretty girl who was talking to him and all of a sudden he was like, you know, would would make a comment or something. He was not like that. It was like anyone who worked for him. It was so professional and business like and I appreciated it. I didn't I never felt weird or uncomfortable or like that. I I don't know or what people thought it would be like, I guess yeah. I, didn't, I didn't I never felt that way literally ever and i was in every situation i i was so many times i was sitting when his hear, hearing was bad on his one ear you know i would be sitting on his bed with him talking to him about you know what we were filming or whatever and anyone else would be like that's so weird you know talking to hugh hefner in his bedroom like on his bed and whatever and it was like no it really wasn't it was like where that's just where his office was sometimes yeah, right, right. you know exactly. working or he's working and we're just having a conversation yeah. it was totally normal but yeah so my first time meeting him was just it was cool to see him like in his pjs and the slippers and the whole thing but it, otherwise it was unremarkable in the sense that he was just you know the man of the house yeah. but i i didn't really feel intimidated per se i felt very comfortable i mean i was intimidated at times of course you know when um if he didn't want to be Mike's or whatever, and I had to be the one to knock on his door and be like, uh, can we come in and mic you? <laughs> you know, like those sort of things um, I wasn't excited about. But other than that, like it was always, you know, a pleasure and, and very cool. And I was deeply um, grateful for the fact that he did open up his home to all of us and, um, and trusted us because I know I understood that before, like men weren't even allowed upstairs and my entire crew pretty much were guys and we were up and down and he really trusted us. And thank God, you know, we never betrayed his trust and we 
we all became family, really. We had to because we were so intimate, close with the girls. And I mean, even at the point where like we would joke about sometimes the girls would come down, you know, with these outfits, there's no bra, no underwear. And it's like, hey, dude, you got to mic her. It's like, where are we going to mic her? I don't know. <laughs> We're going out to dinner, like in a lot of tape. A lot of tape. You know, I was like, oh, this is a really hard job. I'm hmm. so sorry, but I'm going to have to have you mic the girl in the, like the, you know, the lace like onesie or whatever <laughs> with no bra, no underwear. But, you know, he really let us be there and 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 we all felt comfortable which was awesome oh so, that is awesome yeah you know i want i want to touch more on kevin burns but let's take a quick break we'll be right back again you're listening to rogue bunny's mayhem Hey listeners, Victoria Fuller here, entrepreneur, artist, and of course forever Miss January 1996. If you're like me and many others, I'm missing the fun-filled days of a magical world built by a true innovator. I think you know who I'm talking about. Well, you're in for a treat, because my bunny sisters and I have joined forces, or should I say, have gone rogue, to revamp the heydays while exploring the future. Yes, I'm talking about the metaverse. So come join me and our sorority of the sexiest ladies on the planet. I promise you won't be disappointed. To join the party, find us at roguebunnies.com. That's R-O-G-U-E-B-U-N-N-I-E-S.com. Connecting collectors to the most beautiful women on the blockchain. Welcome to the metaverse. You know, it's kind of sad. I'm I'm, I'm bumming out because we're like going to be wrapping up. And uh, I know that we're going to have to do another show, but I want to really take opportunity to really touch on Kevin Burns. Kevin Burns. Because I was setting up saying how like we got to go to the office with Titus and you know, and we remember we, we did the, the time I brought him the, the rocks glass because they would always oh, yeah. set out after the, the, the boss had passed, they would have manly night at the office. Remember? And you told yeah. me about that. Yeah. And I said, dude, I know where they get the rocks glass. Cause remember you said they put out a, a Jack and Kokomo. That's Aww. the wrong glass. And I go, I'll go get you one. And remember, we brought that in, and we brought a couple of the butlers. We brought Bryant and Anthony. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting because Kevin said, you know, I'd like to, we're going to have Manly Night, but I'd like to invite the butlers. Mm-hmm. They're used to being the the ones helping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This time, they're going to be a yeah. part of the team, and they're going to get a vote on the movie. And, and you know. And this it was, was after Half Passed Away, yeah. by the way, yeah. that yeah. he had this, yeah. they continued the Manly Night at the office. At the exactly, office, Exactly, at yeah. the Prometheus office. And by the way, did you know that they both passed away on the same day? <gasps> yeah. Two, two, two years, years later. Apart. Yes. I did yeah. not know that. The same date, different years, same day. I didn't know that. Yeah. So wow. wild. And so I always thought like those two, because they were so, you know, like you can picture them as like 10 year old boys in school yeah. together, like and you and know, yang, like yeah, totally. Yeah. And they would have been, I could hear them both cackling, <laughs> laughing, <laughs> <laughs> that how the story ended, that they both, yeah. it was on the same day. Day it was like un yeah. not same day sorry but you know what I mean like the same same date, date. same yeah. date wow. um, September seventeenth yeah mm-hmm. it's wild wow so that was the bizarre ending because again they both were so smart about you know just stories and storytelling and how things ended and whatever and so they would have really got a kick out of that I think you know but yeah I, I honestly cannot believe talking about Kevin Burns in the past tense he has been such a huge part of well both of our lives yeah. for sure i mean because yeah when you work a lot, of opportunity, work, right? lot yeah. of opportunity and when you work for him it was like a full on you know it wasn't just like you go to work and you go home like you're on the phone with him all the time and you're you know you're, there's a lot of conversations and it was really intense and so it was like family he would call us his mishbucha it was like you know you really you fight you know you love hard you fight hard and you know I think the people that stuck around were the ones who could really speak up for themselves. Because if you were mousy, he would eat you alive. You know, he was like, he wanted you to speak up. And right. and, and uh, he was insanely intelligent. In, like his stories were unbelievable. His voices, his caricatures, his drawing, so creative, so talented. I can't say enough good things about him. And then sometimes, yeah, we would fight and it's like he would yell and I would <laughs> yell. And it was like crazy. But, but all, but so right? much, exactly. Yeah. But so much love and so much, yes, opportunity. And I'm so grateful to him from the bottom of my heart and all of Prometheus, really. And this guy's still employed by them, which is so awesome. Oh, yeah. still they, working they've there. been so good to me. Yeah, it's so cool. Joe and Kim and Dave. It's just like an incredible company. I mean, you, you, you used to tell me, like, I mean, Titus, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but it was tough when Kevin passed and we would talk and he goes, bro, I just miss him. 
Yeah. Just yeah. thinking about them. Right. Yeah. And and I go, I know that feeling. Yeah. Because when half passed, yeah. I couldn't get them. I, yeah. To this day, I think yeah. about them all the time. And they're the and, boss. It's hard to imagine and you like, do how late things work without stuff, them. Right? Oh, and, yeah. It was long hours. But we were his family. And, you know, Kevin didn't have family, so we were his family. So, but he was a mentor and a dear friend. Um, he would, you know, and he loved those girls, the girls next door. I mean, he really, our job is to make them look good, right? you know, to tell a good story, make them look good. He never wanted to make, do anything to make them look bad. He was really sensitive about that. Yeah, it's true. But he cared about people and he was a big personality. But I will tell you, Huge. he was the guy that would, I've never had a boss like this that would, when you were sick, call you at home to make Aww. sure you're okay, you know, or uh, I had a, one of our producers passed away, a good friend of mine, and he called me the day after the guy passed to make sure I was okay, you know, and talk through all that. So I just really appreciated that. I mean, um, Kevin did everything big. Yeah, he could yell, <laughs> but most of the time he would, he would ask that person to come back in and apologize to them. Yeah, that's true. But he was, he had a big heart and he really loved people. Yeah. And Girls Next Door would not be Girls Next Door without Kevin No, Burns. for sure. He was literally like, he and Hef worked really side by side to everything down to the final edits were, you know, was mm-hmm. approved by Hef as well. But Kevin really, I mean, like you talk about the screenings, you know, like what these guys would have and the, you know, were, was really cool stories and it was laid out. And then Kevin would come in and blow it up and turn it around. And at first you're like, fuck, you know, because he did so much work or whatever. But then what he did was like, oh my God, like yeah. that was amazing. And then what he did made it even better. Amazing and yeah. yeah, he was yeah. an amazing talent and storyteller and everything. Did he, he write a book? Fascinating. I don't think no, so. No, but oh, he should did, have. He didn't? He okay. should have. Yeah. But he, he literally did everything. He was just an incredible, incredible talent on so many levels. And, um, yeah, so many of us, you know, we worked for him for so many years. And, um, you know, we we're so lucky to have had had learned so much from him. Like, to this day, like, I'm not in reality TV anymore, but I take so much of what I've learned from him into other stuff that I do. What actually originally the reason why Kevin and Hef bonded in the first place was over cartoons. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because they both would draw comic book characters. Yeah, Hef had his, uh, what is he, Goo Hefner, I think Yeah, Goo yeah, Hefner. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Which I'd love to know where all those archives are, because they're all in the in the archives, those comic strips that he started as a child. Those should be with, with all the scrapbooks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, with the scrapbooks. No? The, the scrapbooks H- are, H- H- Foundation, yeah. probably, I yeah. would think. Oh. Yeah. Well, kids, we're gonna have to wrap, and we could keep going. So much you know, to talk about, yeah. um, I'm glad that that we we got an opportunity to actually speak up for for many that can't speak for themselves, mm-hmm. and to be able to say thank you. Like I'm forever grateful to the boss. Yeah. Half. I mean, what he opened up for me, but Kevin, you know, even like uh, when I did the radio show and mm-hmm. I started the radio show, you know, it had to be approved by half mm-hmm. through Mary, and Mary said, "Yep, he's all for it." And then I called Kevin. I go, "You cool with me doing this?" And he goes, "Absolutely. You tell me what I need to do to help you." Aww. You know, I mean, they were going to bring me on Bridget uh, Beaches. Mm -hmm. I was going to go do that. I was going to do her that show, but I would have had to leave the mansion to go do that. And I just couldn't do that. But the opportunity, but I told Kevin why I couldn't do that. And he goes, he understood. He goes, you tell me what I need to do to help you. Mm -hmm. He goes, you've been so generous and kind to like help us out. Yeah, you really were. How do I help you? And see, that's the part I want people to hear. Yes. You know, it's like, look, that's what he did. Yeah. None of us would have what we have if it weren't for these two men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. These two men really opened up. Mm-hmm. And, and look at, now we, we are have Rogue Bunny's later. Later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. About we have this mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. And if it really and stems And it's still all bringing back. people, yeah. like, still you guys, back, yeah. back to us to talk about these people and your experiences yeah. because it's just changed all of our lives yeah. in truly. the best way. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for I, having I just, us. I love you, Lauren. I love you, Titus. You, I mean, you guys, we're family forever. And let's not just wait for another show. Let's get together. Let's go grab dinner. Cool. All right? I'd love, love that. It. All right. I'm Brian Olea. I'm Victoria Fuller. Jennifer Pershing. Scott Ramsey. And you've been listening to Lauren and Titus right here on Rogue Buddies <laughs> Mayhem and The, the Mayhem, Mayhem Continues. continues.